This is my late grandfather, Rudy Jennings. My family knew him as Pap. I was 12 when Pap died of colon cancer in 2006. Even at that young of an age, I still remember how deeply I was affected by his death. It was the first time I had ever experienced it that closely. In the years since his passing, I've acquired a few of Pap's personal belongings. His 2000 Honda Accord, which has certainly seen better days. His favorite pair of boat shoes, which I'm not nearly cool enough to pull off. And most notably, his small collection of vintage Seiko watches. After he passed, the watches were left in a lockbox at the bank to be retrieved on my 18th birthday. That is except for this one, which was retrieved on June 1st, 2012, the day before I graduated high school. It's a 1993 7T34 reference 6A09. As its nickname, the Flight Master, implies, it's a pilot's watch, and it's known for its accuracy and reliability. It's got a rotating bezel, four subdials, and even a built-in alarm, so it literally has every bell and whistle that any good flying ace could hope for. It's classy and stylish, sure, but above all else, it's functional and unwaveringly reliable. Of Pap's watches, I think the 7T34 is my favorite. Not because it's the best-looking or most accurate timepiece, but because it's just the most Pap. To me, it says so much about his style and his character. It's worth mentioning that none of Pap's other watches fit me correctly. They're all far too big to wear comfortably, and I can't bring myself to get them resized. The 7T34 Flightmaster, however, has always fit just right. It literally holds me the closest. This one is a 1984 H556 reference 5029, known by collectors as the pre arnie it got its nickname when its younger brother, the H558, was famously worn by everyone's favorite bodybuilder turned action hero turned Californian governor Arnold Schwarzenegger in a handful of mid to late 80s blockbusters, most notably 1987's Predator. Get to the chopper! Yes, that one. Like the H558, the pre arnie is a diver's watch, and it's pressure rated for submersion up to 100 meters. What sets this watch apart from other divers, however, is not its performance in water, but rather its unique blend of both digital and analog components. In an era marked by the exodus away from analog and towards digital, the H556 was Seiko's attempt to combine the two, to swear their allegiance to both the old school and the new school simultaneously. I spent much of my childhood watching Pap do the same thing. Pap checked off all the boxes on the you-might-be-a-grandpa-if list, However, for a guy born in the 1920s, his relationship with technology was a bit unorthodox. Even into his late 70s, he kept his house stocked with the latest technology. Flat screen TVs, surround sound systems, and top of the line computers were all aplenty. Touch sensitive panels controlled the lights in his dressing room, there was a working landline phone in his shower, and after receiving his diagnosis of colon cancer, he promptly mounted a 10-inch plasma screen TV to the wall opposite of the toilet. Most people would call such reliance on technology excessive, and understandably so. But to Pap, technology was art, and it was his favorite way to express his insatiable curiosity. Like the H556 pre arnie Pap was the very best amalgam of the old and new school. He taught me to find and appreciate the value and necessity of both, to not forget where you came from, and to not be afraid of what the future holds either. This one is a late 70s A159 reference 5019G, one of the earliest fully digital watches that Seiko ever made. It's often mistaken for the 0674 reference 5009, which Roger Moore famously wore in 1977's classic Bond film The Spy Who Loved Me. My favorite feature of this watch is in its fully digital readout, its built-in alarm, or its vintage patina. It's a feature that's not offered by any other Seiko watch, or any other watch in the world for that matter. It's the three letters that Pap crudely welded to the clasp, his initials R-E-J. Pap had something of a fascination with personalization, and he found a way to do it to most of the things he owned. I'm not sure exactly how or when, but at some point he nicknamed his house The Reef, and he designed a logo for it and he put it all over his house. All 
over. He had it on a rug. He put it on napkins. He put it on a toothpick dispenser. Suffice it to say, Pap liked to acquire things and mark them as his own. He did the same thing with my cousin, my sister, my brother, and I. Perhaps that's a poor choice of words. He didn't physically brand us, I promise. But he always made sure that we knew we were his. He did all the things that grandpas are supposed to do with their grandkids. He took us on road trips. He gave us piggyback rides. He took us to McDonald's way more than he should have. He took us out on his paddle boat. He sat with us in his living room and watched movies. All of this, despite not even being related to any of us biologically. Pap was my dad's stepdad. In fact, it's technically even a stretch to call him that. He and my grandmother were never officially married, and they never lived together long enough to be united by common law, either. He and Nana were just... together. And they stuck with each other for over 40 years. When Pap claimed something as his own, when he chose something or someone to hold dear, he made sure it was for life. I've thought a lot about Pap since his death. I do nearly every day. I visit his headstone sometimes, but not nearly enough. I flip through photo albums and I've found that his image isn't on as many pictures as I would like. My memories of him are scarce, they come in brief flashes, and they're not always the clearest. It makes me sad that I don't remember him better. As time passes, each one of these watches slowly depreciates in value. Most of them aren't even worth half of what they originally cost. This is bad news for anyone looking to flip them for profit. Frankly, though, I'm not concerned with resale value. I'm keeping them, and, Lord willing, I'll someday pass them down to my children and grandchildren. I'm a firm believer that I'll see Pap again someday. In the meantime, I have his watches to count down the seconds until that day comes.